Today I got an email from one of the viewers saying they got a SkipTech 4000 CB radio and they got problems with the, I think it's the channel switch is a rotary channel encoder on these, but we'll look into that. These were distributed by Kerno at the time, and it even says so on, on them. You've got an extension meter socket with a 2.5mm socket there, extension speaker and public address. This one's actually come with its power lead, which is absolutely fantastic. It's also come with its mic, and it's, it's pretty well immaculate, except the channel display board and the LED board and the whole front bezel is entirely missing. So you say, well, what's the point of doing it? Well, if Matey wants to look at how the skip tech's tuned up, we'll tune this skip tech up, even though it's incomplete. Anyone, any of you have got a smashed up one in a box somewhere, we can buy that bit off you, can't we? So there we go. I paid £10.50 for this off eBay uh, some years ago, and I've never found any more bits to, to put it together. I was hoping to find something perhaps at a radio rally, uh, but it hasn't happened. So I've just dug this off the shelf, and it may as well help somebody. Uh, it would be quite novel um, talking on the radio with no display. The other thing, if the display, if, if we can't change channel, and there's always that possibility, uh, then we'll we'll do all the tune-up and demonstration on channel nine, because we'll certainly be able to get that to work because it's direct, directly addressable. So uh, yes, it's. Uh, is, I wonder if this is like the um, Team Lancaster. Just unsoldered that speaker. So I don't get this. It's kind of immaculate and robbed. There's a bunch of little lights, which no doubt should show through those four slits there. It's nicely laid out, but it uses the C5121 phase lock loop, which is the one that boots up on channel 9, and because of that isn't one of my favourites. So we've got that there. I'm not expecting this to be something that works brilliantly, and the PC identification, I can actually see it better on the video monitor than I can in reality. Then we go in the pixelation of the digital zoom. PC8725 that looks like to me. So we're going to just see that nothing else has been robbed. Yeah, there's been a lot of soldering. I just wonder if this is a kind of newish set that... Um, got returned under warranty and was a really troublesome one and then the supplying dealer had to uh, supply a display for another one under warranty and cut his losses and use this to do so so it's had a lot of going over for for dry joints by the looks of it Anyway, we'll power it up, and we won't know, apart from it will start on channel 9, so that is good news. I know it will. And we'll simply turn the channel selector switch until I get 2779125 in my frequency counter. And I'm going to count the notches, you know, 1, 2, 3, and as Matey says on the email, it uses a rotary channel encoder instead of the usual... Uh, switch from earlier on. These were about 1992, so one of the later 2781 sets. So pause the video, I'll make up a chart of what I can think of the adjustments. I've looked for a circuit diagram, no, I do have the instruction book on file and uh, there's, I've got a scan of that. So here goes, we'll connect it to the power supply and we'll switch it on. And it's lit up and we've got the, the kind of hiss you'd expect. I'll just attempt to go into transmit, and it transmits. I wonder when I press transmit if any of those light up. No. So it makes the right noises.
So I'll count the channels. If it's if it starts on channel nine, which I'm expecting it to do, so that's nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'll just key up. No, that's not right. I'm going to channel out. There we go. So I am on channel 20. looks about where it ought to be to be honest I would think it's going to be that preset there and I'm right it is so just do a whistle check to see where we are <whistles> voila it's exactly where we want it to be so I'll make a note that That's deviation. That leaves an awful lot of uh, presets. What we'll just do is just do the frequency. So we're on channel 20. So it should be 27.79125 which it's very close to and it's going to be the trimmer capacitor just here which will be for that and that is, I've actually turned it in the right direction for once Now it's either slightly above or slightly below. That'll do, 27.79124. We'll move over to receive now. I've got the right frequency on the signal generator and I can hear it at 0.3 of a microvolt, which is incredible, uh, coming through on this radio. Now then, that sounds like the detector is absolutely miles out. Why can't I see it on the oscilloscope? Let's sit there. Sure, we've got mice in here. There's adjust things. So, just turn that down a bit. I guess the detector coil is this one. So it could could, could be that one, but I guess it's that one. So let's see what happens. Well, it's got wax in it for a start. It does sound like the detector's out. It sounds a bit strangled. Minutely out, so I was wrong there. But it is the detector, and that's what I thought it was. So let's keep S9 on the signal generator, and let's look at the meter, which is reading S9. So... I want to find the preset anyway. I wonder if it's the one to the right. No, it's going to be one of those then. It's that one.
Okay, so we'll go over to the synod meter and we'll tune up the receiver. So, as I see this, between the IF and the receiver, and that's going to be 455 IF there, that's going to be 10.7 IF there, so that's going to be the front end there, that's the feeling I get. Wow! I was out. It's super sensitive. So we'll now do those IF ones. happening here that sounds better so we can hear it down to 0 0.15 of a microvolt and to get some readings we've got 0.95 microvolts for 20 decibel cyanide and then we'll look at the more meaningful ones for 12 decibel cyanide we've got 0.39 microvolts and for 10 decibel cyanide we've got 0.31 of a microvolt so that's very sensitive so let's see if we can set the squelch up So, signal generator off, turn that camera off, squelch to threshold, signal generator on, squelch hasn't come in, so let's look, one microvolt, three microvolts, that's not sensitive enough, let's turn it to four, ten microvolts, thirty microvolts, hundred microvolts, 300 microvolts, 1 volt, 1 millivolt, 3 millivolts it comes in at. Well, we'll see whether it's the other preset here. And it is. So it's coming in at S9 now on full. Now we'll check that threshold at the bottom again. Signal generator back on. One microvolt. Three microvolts. Not the most sensitive in the world. It's got a better reading. It's actually coming on in at what? It's the three range. It's coming in at 1.2 microvolts and dropping that out back out at 1.1. So it should be all right, but I like them a bit more sensitive than this, especially when you go around places like Scratchy Corner. 
So that's set that, so we'll make a note that that is the squelch preset. So that leaves us with two up there and one over there that we've got no idea what they do. I will just have a little play. Okay, so I was lying about one of the adjustments. That is not TX meter, that's TX power. So the one on the left is TX power, the one on the right is TX meter. So the radio actually did turn up to just 5 watts, I've just turned it back down to 4. So it's all got tuned up and then, so it, I, I got it at 3.8, it's now 4. So that's great. So we've discovered that, we've therefore discovered that. This could well be might gain or something like that. Um, it's in that kind of part of the circuit and we know that's deviation yep so that's covered everything except that one it could even be a something to do with the external S meter I really don't know I haven't got a circuit so we do have the instruction book but it doesn't have a circuit in it so that actually works quite well it, it, a lot more so than I thought so if you press dim, all those lights come on. Ah, it's one of these sets where all the back illuminates. So I presume that in that position it's lit up and in that position it's not lit up. So we've got the channel 9 switch which clearly works. Public address, high low power, on off volume, squelch, tone, RF gain, and mic gain. So there we are, it's done. Um, Pisces there's no display, and I say if any of you got a junk box with uh, a display board in it, uh, send me an email. So hopefully that's helped somebody who's got one of these. Oh, we'll do an on the air test later with an interesting set with no display. It sounds quite exciting. I'll just put this together and we'll shove it on the air and we'll just see if we can hear any good or bad buddies out there. Oh, I didn't need to unsolder that either. It's on a plug and socket, but I didn't notice. So we're on the aerial now and I've just knocked it down one. So that must be 19. 20, 21, 22, 23, 30, 40, 10, seems to work a lot better than I thought does full 4 watts receiving absolutely brilliantly shame there's no display and uh, we'll put it on the air later on with Mr Chippy it's going to make for an interesting video isn't it with no display I'll count the channels we'll soon sound it find channel 31 thank you for watching this skip tech uh, I'll look at my notes because it doesn't say on the front TI 4000 FM